Packers have played their four quarters. Now in its 40th year on the air, it's time for the fifth quarter. Live from the turn, powered by Top Golf Swing Suites. Here are Mark Daniels and Matt Z. Oh, we're playing through. Hello, everybody. It is great to see you again, and welcome <laughs> to the very first outdoor edition of the fifth quarter. If the Green Bay Packers can celebrate their 100th birthday yesterday. Why not celebrate the 40th birthday of, uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you, the best Packer talk show on radio. It's certainly the oldest. <laughs> Everything old is new again here on 1265 Lombardi Avenue, and it is a pleasure to be speaking to you from right outside what will be the newest establishment in the Titletown District. The turn powered by Top Golf Suite, uh, Top Golf Swing Suite. Cannot wait till we get inside. They're just finishing up. They're working as we speak, and we'll be over there very, very soon. But what a great location, and it's great to have, again, as my co-host for year six, seven, somewhere in there. Something like that. Something Not as like long that. as you've been hello doing there, this. Hello Matt Z. Hello, Welcome hello. Back, buddy. I would just like to say that this show has been a part of my life, really? my entire life. Good. That's yes. nice to hear. I turned 41 in November, so you've always been a part of who I am. I just think I threw my back out. It's pretty special. <laughs> I think I threw my back out. This is very special for me. You didn't know that. This, is, this has been my baby. Yeah. Ever since you were a baby. And do, I, you know, do you remember every location you've done this show from? Uh, yeah, most of them. Most of them. You know what? We started, remember McCall Supper Club way out on Bay Settlement Road? Anybody here remember McCall Supper Club? Way out there. We're getting closer and closer and closer. <laughs> if I make 50 years on this show, we'll be doing it live from the 50-yard line. Is that okay, Merv? All right? <laughs> May- we'll finally get inside the stadium. Maybe the 50-yard line in the Titletown District yeah. football field. Well, that might work, too. Why, Why not? not? We're outside under a tent tonight, but it's great to have you with us. And before we go much further, obviously, this is really going to be fun. Yeah. I mean, I took a tour of this place. They're almost done with it. It's going to be unbelievable. What a place uh, to hold this show all season long with great Packer guests all year long as well. But we're also brought to you by our friends at Robinson's Heating and Cooling. And I think you guys know that I've walked out of here with either gift cards to the pro shop, tickets to games. Robinson has been fantastic with us for years and years and years. Mike and the crew, thank you very much again for being on board. That is awesome. A couple of new sponsors as well. Ganyo Clay products sponsor of the show in Green Bay and Card and Coin, Packer City Antiques. Because this is the 40th anniversary, I thought it'd be kind of fun to celebrate 40 years of the show. And Packer City Antiques is loaded with Packer memorabilia. They're also a great place to get quotes on gold, uh, jewelry, and uh, silver. And we're going to have some uh, great items from days gone by reliving the 40 years of history uh, as part of the fifth quarter this year, thanks to the That's guys awesome. at Card and Coin. So welcome aboard, everybody. You know how the show works. We're going to bring on a special guest every Monday night or Tuesday if it's a Monday nighter. And tonight we got the Packer president and CEO, Mark Murphy, is waiting in the wings to join us in a couple of minutes. Can't wait to get after Murph again this year as our leadoff hitter. Speaking of guests. Yes? Who was your very first guest? Oh, player guest? That's tough. I can't remember. No? Well, the show started actually uh, with Chuck Lane, who was then the public relations director of the Packers. Okay. Chuck and I in studio at WTAQ. Back then, even different call letters. That's how old it was. Back then, WGEE was the calls yep. back in the day. Yep. We did it in the studio for a couple of years, and we did a phone-in show. It was a call-in show and stuff like that. So uh, we took it out on the road a few years after that, once it became the fifth quarter. But I can't remember who my first player guest might have been. That surprises me because well, you are a steel trap of information. I, I know, but, I, yeah, they all run together, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. This is eight coaches I've covered already. Good you Lord. remember that. There and you I go. I do remember that. We started halfway through the BART regime, and right. we've been there ever since. So we got to get to that coach in a little bit. He made his debut last month, uh, last Thursday night. And we'll start every show with a quick little synopsis of the game played most recently. And that was the preseason opener against the Houston Texans. After a couple of days of practice against those guys, they went out at Lambo last Thursday night. And the Packers get the win 28 to 26. And we'll head into the locker room each week to start our show. And we'll go with the first touchdown maker of the year. Came from special teams when J.K. Scott boomed a punt. Houston's Kiki Kuti got turned around trying to field it inside the 10, glanced off his leg, and there was Equiminius St. Brown hustling down the field and gathering it in, in the end zone. Uh, I think it's big for special teams. You know, we hop on that. Special teams get enough, you know, time and uh, enough love, so it's important to, you know, make plays on special teams, too. You knew there was going to be a pile coming. Uh-huh. You cradled it pretty securely. Yeah. You yeah, you know, it's trying to, it's like fumble Joe, you know, loose ball, get on it. You do that since you're a kid, just hold it tight. Hug your kids every night. That's how we hug that football. 
Just like this little one. Well done. <laughs> EQ. Packers took the lead for good at 14-7 when Deshaun Kaiser led a two-minute drive and hit free agent wide receiver Darius Shepard from 10 yards out to make it 14-10. Yeah, pretty crazy um, experience. You know, Lambo, um, the the fans were crazy tonight. It was cool to be a part of that and just to have my first catch be a touchdown and something I'll never forget. And getting to go Lambo leap out, you know, just off the jump like that is incredible. He had some fun with it. This kid's having a really good camp, too, in that wide I, receiver battle. I know you've been high on him, yeah, seeing him yeah. at the training camp yeah, practice. We'll talk about him a little bit later on tonight. Two scores for the pack in the third quarter, built the lead to 28 10. Jamon Moore with a one yard grab from Tim Boyle. And on the very next series, Boyle found free agent Alan Lazard with a pretty 27 yard post. Tim threw a perfect ball. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better ball, especially being a big guy. Um, I always want to jump up and go get it and use my size and strength to my advantage. And um, I knew he was on my back. He was playing outside of me. So I knew all I had to do was just look it in and catch it. He got it all right. Defense came up with a couple of interceptions. Kadar Holman, a draft choice. Brandon Sullivan, free agent. Will Redmond recovered a fumble. Uh, they did miss a few tackles now and then. They did give up 16 points in the fourth quarter. But uh, the kids fought hard because they were kids out there on Thursday night. 26 players didn't even dress, and I think only five, maybe six starters were even in uniform. Seventh round draft choice, Ty Summers nearly went the distance at inside linebacker and led the way with 10 tackles. They told me, hey, you're ready to be gassed after this one. And so I was like, all right. I was, I was like, hey, man, I need all the reps I can get. If I'm gassed, if anything, I'm working on my cardio. So um, I loved it, you know, sore. That's all part of it, you know, doing special teams and defense, but I appreciate they're willing to keep me in there. Yeah, good cardio workout for the kid. <laughs> the rest of the game, he was running all over the place, Jason. Joe Webb, the third down a lot. Finally, we'll hear from Matthew LeFleur, who was a winner in his head coaching debut. He just had to soak in the first one a little bit, right? There was there was a just a brief period of time where I look up and you, you just see all the greats written all you know uh, in Lambo and I just I mean it's it is a pretty cool moment and it's something I'll never forget yeah star Nitschke Hudson Daniels no I'm not up there but uh, you get the point <laughs> you get the point by year 50 you'll be yeah, up there no congratulations by year 50. Matt yeah one and oh in the preseason and they're back at it they'll be practicing tomorrow Baltimore Ravens on the road they're going north of the border to Winnipeg to take on the Raiders and then they'll wrap it up against the Kansas City Chiefs and away we go to open up the NFL's 100th season Against the Bears on Thursday night. It's the matchup that had to be chosen. It had to be. Yeah, it's there was the no other choice. game in the NFL yeah. schedule every year, and they do it twice. Speaking of the 100th anniversary, our friends from New Era are back as well. Uh, Kyle and the gang out in Buffalo, New York, they sent me a big box of hats, and I've got the sideline hats, the coat, the scouts like these more. They're these nice ones. But 100th well, anniversary logo, Packer logo here. Look at that. They're awesome. And some baseball caps as well. We'll be giving those away every I think week. I heard. I think I heard a fan say you're adorable in oh, that hat. Jesus. Yeah, right. Not the word I would have chosen, but yeah, it you. Came off, it came off very quickly, <laughs> that's for sure. All right, but we are just getting started. Pack preseason underway, training camp, we're right in the middle of it. And the guy that runs it all, Packer President Mark Murphy, is going to be our guest when we come back. We are live right outside the turn, powered by Top Golf Swing Suite. It's the fifth quarter opening night of year 40, returning right after this time out. Fifth quarter, live from the turn, powered by Top Golf Swing Suites. Here are Mark Daniels and Matt Z. Great to be back. Hello, everybody. Thanks again for coming out on opening night. It is my pleasure to welcome back. He has uh, been uh, our first guest of the season for the last several years, now his 12th year as the uh, president and CEO of the uh, Green Bay Packers franchise. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Murphy to the fifth quarter. Hello, Murph. Mark, how are you? It's great welcome. to have you back. Welcome to Titletown. <laughs> what the hell have you wrought out here? This is unbelievable and getting better by the minute. Well, and I, I you know, uh, we're excited, first of all, to have you <laughs> have the show here oh, at thanks. the turn. But, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a nice addition to, to Titletown. And, uh, you know, we got plans coming up. We're going to have uh, residential, an office, uh, apartment complex here, an office tower. And uh, we're really pleased with Titletown. I was good. I know we didn't come to talk about title. Time. Well, no, we, we, we wanted to start here because we're going to be here and be, uh, you know, at least tenants on a weekly basis here, hopefully for the foreseeable future. Uh, this, this is spectacular. Okay. I don't know how many of you are golfers, but uh, I cannot the, the, wait. The, the, the simulators are unbelievable. And it's not just golf. Zombie dodgeball, football, pitching, 
all different games you can play there, and uh, we think it's going to be the best sports bar in Wisconsin. Uh, I, I'm not going <laughs> to argue with you. You got the the best sledding hill. You got a great brewery. You Might got have the only. You got a pretty good medical facility, <laughs> yeah. and you got now the incubator <laughs> with uh, your partnership with Microsoft yeah. and Title Town Tech. When you started laying out plans about, and it really was a trigger. We got to stay competitive financially, and I know a very big money enterprise that is the national football league billions and billions i can't yeah i don't know what the, what do they go over nine billion or whatever uh but uh there is only so much of it that is shared revenue and uh you guys started talking probably what decade ago at least yeah no and well even before i got here the packers had the foresight to start buying up land and so that, well, that i thought was that was just really for more smart. parking <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that, that too <laughs> But uh, yeah, just you know, really, uh, as you said, to, to make sure, number one, that uh, we remain competitive, but also to make sure the team can stay here and survive here. We have a really good collective bargaining agreement now. We have revenue sharing among the owners, and then you know, salary cap with our players. But that might not always be the case. So I think this really, it's gonna. The main thing it does is it diversifies our revenue. There was fear upstairs that this franchise could move or fold. Well, long term. Yeah, I mean, things can change quickly. Huh? So Well, we want to prevent it. I I, well, I, I think you're pretty secure now, that's for <laughs> sure. i got to look at your, your endowment fund, even though it wasn't a little down year financially. But uh, you also are giving back uh, as, as well as ensuring your financial stability. Sure. And, and I think that was as much of an emphasis with this place. And oh, absolutely. From I mean, here we, down do, to you know, we do a lot through our foundation. You know, I think last year our charitable impact was over $8 million. But, you know, really the other big aspect of Titletown is this is a community asset now. And, I mean, you look, it's great. I mean, you know, so much of the, of the events and the different things that go on here are free. And we want the research that we had done showed that Green Bay uh, was really at a disadvantage in terms of the number of young professionals here. And one of our thoughts was building something like this, and especially now with the partnership with Microsoft and Titletown Tech, is this is going to help cause graduates stay here and help us attract uh, young professionals, which is you know, really going to help this area grow. And you really wanted this to be a community place, too. Yes. Free playground. Well, football. yeah, well, you got the playground. I mean, no developer, pr no private developer is going to put a full football field right in the middle of their development. <laughs> but we do. And I mean, you come over any time of day and it's packed. I mean, people just, and we have footballs available so people can, we did put up a net though, because they were kicking field goals into the kits on the playground. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> that is, <laughs> for me, that's the most impressive part is the full size football field. If I was a kid or a teen, I would be here every day after school with my buddies playing football. This is the place to be. That's the idea. Yeah, yeah. and it, you know, we it's very rarely scheduled. It's mostly just free time. Sure. And uh, yeah, when I mean, remember when you were when I was in you know grade school, I never played on an astroturf. Of course, they didn't have astroturf then. <laughs> well, <laughs> but to be able to play on an astroturf field and uh, it's it's just it's great to see kids come out and how much they enjoy. Yeah, it. we were we were torn up grass and loose gravel. Now, when I was a kid, <laughs> and I grew up not far from here, just down the street, Beamer Street, which is only blocks from here. We would hop over, it was only about a waist-high rail fence to get on to the practice field ah. and run around until we got chased off so, <laughs> <laughs> because it was verboten at the time. I knew you were a young <laughs> criminal. Hey, yeah, really. <laughs> Did I ever tell you how we used to sneak into Lambo? No. Do you remember the court, the big, green, goofy fence that was surrounded the stadium there for years and years and years after the chain link came down? Hmm. Next to the old administration building mm -hmm. on the north end of the uh, stadium. You remember that, Mark? You've seen pictures of that. that I've seen long. pictures of that. Yeah, you're a long time. No, well, but right where, there. right where, the, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> and the, was the visiting locker room was on the other end, though. It still. was. Yeah, yeah, so, but anyway, right next to the corner of the administration building and that green monster, we were able to peel back just enough <laughs> of a corner to crawl sneak under in. and sneak in. Do you have a well, wanted we'll sign a up at Lambeau Field? <laughs> yeah, really. I think you owe us some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been a season ticket holder, Mark, for Green Bay's most years. wanted, Mark Daniels. Yeah, really. Look at you. Well, this is fabulous, uh, Mark. And again, uh, hats off to you guys uh, for the foresight mm -hmm. and, uh, and really everything that goes on here, whether it's the winter carnivals or the music before games and everything else. It's just unbelievable. Well, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, our executive committee and the board really had the foresight. Ed Policy's been great. He's kind of taken the lead on this. And, you know, Jackie Kurtz, uh, and this is kind of a funny story. I have a monthly column that's called Murphy Takes Five where I write a column and then I take five questions. 
my kids say, really, Dad, you can only take five questions? Well, the, the, we, set, we set a limit. But she, uh, she contacted me through that and said, you know, my husband's from Green Bay. I have experience in residential development. Um, and so she applied for the job. We looked at her resume. And so she is in charge of all the events here wow. at Titletown. Hmm. And she, she does an unbelievable job. Just I mean, from your uh, Packers.com? Packers.com, yeah. Right. Good thing you didn't go to yeah. 10 questions. You'd <laughs> yeah. be having a full staff. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, let's turn our attention to football, Mark. Mm -hmm. It is a brand-new era mm -hmm. here in Green Bay. 15th head coach is on board at Matt LaFleur. I don't want to dredge up a lot of tough stuff, but I do want to have you touch on uh, just the process uh, of, of landing uh, this head coach and uh, and the Mike McCarthy era coming to an end. Very difficult time in December. The process of finding Matt. Uh, I know you wanted to get as many people involved up on that third and fourth floor as possible in getting that thing done. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, it was a re very difficult decision to, to move on from uh, from Mike McCarthy. Obviously, had a great run here. There's a street named after him. Won a Super Bowl, but you know, and really evaluating it. it felt like we needed to make a change and uh, yeah you know that happens I mean you look across it's it's hard you know the coaches it's such an all-consuming job that it's really difficult to continue at long term but um, you know and, and I know um, you know I think a lot of people would have said well why don't you wait until after the season but you know I, I think in some ways it was fair to Mike and it certainly helped us so it got us started right away on the search process we interviewed uh, candidates who were not working in the NFL presently uh, before the season that ended. That final month? Yeah. And we interviewed a number there. I mean, some, you know, Jim Caldwell, Chuck Pagano, who's right. now the defensive coordinator of the Bears. Yeah. And, uh, but then, you know, it allowed us once the, uh, once the season ended to hit the ground running. And, um, yeah, we, you know, it was uh, Brian Guggenkunst, uh, Russ Ball, and myself uh, kind of flew crisscrossed across the country. We flew to New England. For, we did have a private jet. If we tried to go commercial, <laughs> we would, we would, we'd still be, uh, still be. Yeah, all right. But <laughs> your net profits down to six hundred seventy. Right. Yeah, we ended up, we ended up interviewing ten candidates, and you know, so we went from New England to New Orleans to Miami, and then Nashville. Matt was the very last candidate, and uh, he, he really, uh, he blew us away. It was, he was by far the most, uh, most uh, prepared candidate, and we, it was just a very natural interview. Uh, you know, but we knew usually the last candidate has an advantage because it's kind of the last, right, fresh, last yeah, impression you have. Mind, yeah. So uh, we all we all felt very strongly about him, but we agreed to, to sleep on it. You know, we woke up, met the next morning, and we all felt the same way and uh, made the offer to, to him the next day. And uh, yeah, I I've been really pleased. I mean, obviously, you know, you know we've only had one preseason game, but uh, I think he's doing all the right things. What, besides his preparedness for the interview, during that whole process, what else stood out to you about Matt Lafleur? What impressed you beyond that? Well, his communication skills, and I think you're starting to see that. He's uh, really, uh, I think, early on uh, has developed a, a, a healthy. The players have great respect for him. Uh, he's been very direct, I think, with players when there's issues and problems. Um, the other thing, quite honestly, was um, the depth of his experience, the number of different places that he's been. He's been around a lot of, uh, a lot of great head coaches, and his work with quarterbacks was especially uh, uh, something that we viewed as a real positive. Did you feel that was needed in the wake of all of the post-divorce uh, stories that have come out between Aaron and Mike? Um, you know, it wasn't an absolute essential, but um, we knew that there was some benefits to having an offensive coach. And, you know, the other thing I think, um, you know, he was had a lot of success. Um, you know, he was <coughs> with the Rams. He was the offensive coordinator, but he wasn't calling the plays. And um, he made the move, That's made the to decision Tennessee, to go yeah. to Tennessee, which was, you know, as I look at it, that shows that he has confidence in himself, and he knew what he needed, what he needed to. And I think Sean McVay knew on. that too. Oh yeah, to let yeah. him go. Yeah, but um, you know, I think he knew that. You know, he left the Rams were, you know, ended up going to the Super Bowl, but this was uh, something he needed for his career, and uh, certainly was something that was important. You know, we've we talked. Yeah, positive. we talk about the Belichick tree. We talk about Holmgren's tree, but we talk now about God, Shanahan. Sean McVay's tree. That's still no, Sean McVay's too young to have a tree. That, well, that's still, it's, that. a, it's, still a, it's still a sapling. <laughs> yeah. it, you know, it's, it's not a tremendous body of evidence. Yeah. 
Uh, There's you know, roots. To, to take, yeah, there are roots, yeah. but I don't know how yeah. deep they are. No. Uh, but to, to take a chance on a 39-year-old kid that's been a one-year play caller, uh, that's been around these so-called new age gurus that are very young uh, in the NFL. Yeah, but uh, I mean, he's got great experience. I mean, you compare him to Sean McVay, um, he's got more experience than Sean did. He was hired by the Rams, and look what Sean did. And um, but you know, for me, what it's, it, it was the quality of the person. And you know, in in, in any position, you're going to have ups and downs. Um, and you know, we're going to face adversity. And you want somebody that uh, is a person of character. And and I think Matt has shown that. I, I, I've been really impressed. He's, he's come in. He has a real vision for what he wants to do. Um, you know, some of the changes he's made. I mean, people can't see it, but around the locker room. Oh, man, it's, it's, it looks different. But he, he did it in a way where he still respects the history and tradition we have, uh, but he really has put the focus onto the team, this team and these players. And, uh, yeah, I, I think what's been most encouraging for me is, you know, seeing how much the, the player, how the players have responded. I think they have. Can you guys – um, explain a little bit about the changes that he has made that our, our listeners don't see. Just kind of yeah, peel back the curtain for us. Um, sure. You know, within the locker room, um, you know, well, first of all, fresh paint. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, a, a lot of more pictures of the current team, the current players. Um, we still have a lot of the history and tradition. Um, and then as you go, and the other thing that he's really focused on is competition and, and really embracing competition. And so he's got a, in the team meeting room, there's a, a basketball goal. It's high enough there where you can actually uh, shoot uh, baskets. But uh, just, and, and we've, in the player lounge area, we had a lot of computers before and some lounge chairs, but there was nothing that really happened. And, you know, he's got Papa Shot and all different kinds of games there. Um, really to make, I think he wants the players uh, to, they're going to spend a lot of time here and they're going to be working hard, but he, he also wants to create an environment where want to be here and, uh, and, and especially if you can create uh, competition and, and games um, that, that's really a beneficial he sees the tremendous benefits and you, and you mentioned he is just a really he's a good guy he's very pleasant and I think I've spent more time actually at practice talking to Brianna the boys yeah he's there a lot but a fantastic you know uh, you know first lady uh, of the Packers now uh, as well and uh, two young kids uh, and I think he's intent on turning them into high schoolers here, you know, stay <laughs> yeah. for a while. Yeah, well, hopefully have a long stay here. Yeah. And, yeah, and, you know, he's a, he's a coach's son. His father was a longtime football coach at Central Michigan, and then uh, after that, uh, in high school in, in the Central Michigan area. And, uh, yeah, so he's kind of growing. He, Matt's grown up around it. And, uh, yeah, I don't like to use the term Midwestern values, but he, he, he definitely feels very comfortable here in, in Green Bay. You know, he's, you know, he's from kind of a rural area, a smaller area of central Michigan, and I, I think this feels like home to him. All right, let's hope so. Mark Murphy is our guest tonight. All right, we got you up to speed. The LeFleur era is here, but there's a whole lot of other things going around, not only just across Ridge Road, but league-wide as well, and we'll get his thoughts on that when we come back. Fifth quarter's opening night of year number 40 returns right after this timeout. Great to be with you. We are outside tonight and maybe outside next week too, but it won't be long before the turn powered by Top Golf Swing Suite is open and we'll be moving inside through uh, the course of this season. Mark Murphy, the Packer president, is our guest. What took you the game the other night? Always good to win. Always good yeah. to win. No, it's uh, yeah. You can't. You can never put too much weight right. on preseason. We've seen that, but no, I I, I I was pleased. I think you know, especially. What I was looking at is kind of the communication. Um, you know, we didn't have to take you know, time Because you weren't playing and, music at <laughs> number 11. <laughs> well, I've, I've heard some people about those. <laughs> but, you know, the, no, I, I – and, uh, yeah, I thought the pl team played a lot of energy. Obviously, it was great to see special teams uh, yeah. you know, make a, play, a, yeah. a, an impact play. And, uh, yeah, it's a good chance for a lot of our young players. Uh, Looks like you know, the, the one injury coming out of his uh, is Oren Burks. We're not sure of the extent of it, but uh, you know, you know, that was a shame. It's two years in a row in preseason. Yeah, yeah with the ACL and now the peck for uh, Oren. Yeah. Just to get you up to speed, there was a report it's torn, may need surgery, may not. Uh, Matt didn't confirm anything yesterday after practice uh, about Oren, uh, as they're still kind of waiting to see, get another diagnosis soon. If it does not need surgery, and sometimes these things don't, 
Especially if you're Reggie White when he had the faith healing, remember, on the torn biceps a couple of years ago. Uh, just suddenly... A uh, couple years ago, uh, Mark? Yeah, yeah, well, just, like I said, they run together, Mark. They run together. He's been doing this 40 years. Uh, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, you know, there's a chance he could stay active till the final 53 go on injured reserve, and that would allow them to uh, bring him back uh, after... Is it eight weeks? Yeah. Uh, six weeks. Uh, six weeks, six. Yeah. Plus a couple, yeah. But anyway. In terms of preseason, Mark, do you think we'll ever get to the point where there's less preseason games, more regular season games? Roger Goodell has commented on that this summer. Again, he'd like to see it go that direction. Yeah, you know, we're uh, we're in uh, bargaining, uh, middle of bargaining with our Players Association. We've, we're in the ninth year of a 10-year collective bargaining tick, agreement. I know. And, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, well, certainly we don't need four preseason games. Right. It's, uh, it's one of the worst – products that the NFL puts out on the field. Um, you know, they do serve a purpose. It's a chance to evaluate younger players. Um, so we're looking at what we call season structure. Um, you know, if you remember back in 2010, there was some discussion about 18 regular mm -hmm. season and two preseason games. I, I really worry about 18 games, um, and, you know, especially with the concerns about player health and safety. Um, that said, though, I mean, if a compromise, if we could go to 17, 17 and three, or 17 and two, and then this, every team would play one neutral site game. I think uh, either an international game or uh, at a neutral site in the United States. I think there would be some benefit in that, and would help us, particularly the international, would help us grow the game internationally. Do you see Packers playing internationally during the regular season, not just <laughs> yeah, Canada not just in the pre? Canada. Yeah. Well, the, not just a cat. I don't want to say that about Canada. This proposal I'm talking about might be our only shot to yeah. play uh, in London. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope so. I think uh, we would love to, to play, uh, uh, especially in London. But uh, the problem is we, we're not going to give up a home game. Sure. It means too much to our, uh, to our local economy. And then we travel so well to away games that teams are reluctant to give up a home game against the Packers, especially now that most teams have gone to variable pricing. So, and we're usually at the highest tier, so it, it would be a, a hit financially for us. I for really a thought this might be the year. I know the Chargers are playing in the soccer stadium, which seats, what, 30? 27. 27. Yeah. Uh, you know, that Highest price play. tickets in the league, though, Mark. Well. And then, then they're going to be really high for our game. I can yeah. imagine. All right, so I thought that was your shot. Uh, I understand, you know, your thinking there. understand the thinking, same about, uh, you know, even joint practices. Even, you know, Matt LaFleur says he would like a couple. Uh, right. next year after what we experienced last week uh, with the uh, Texans. But, again, I can't see you taking training camp out of here for no. a week just because <laughs> I see the rails full every day. Yeah. No, it's uh, – yeah, you know, and, and we'll see. The the, uh, the Texans had a great experience. And so I, I think, um, you know, teams particularly in the south with the heat and humidity there, I think – I think there's a good chance that we can find one or two teams every year that would want to come up to Green Bay, practice against us, and then play a game here. Um, you know, and then you know, and, and I think for the fans, it's I think they loved from what I could see. You know, having practices against another team, so much to watch, and uh, uh, I think it helped that we had JJ Watt, yeah, you know, Wisconsin's I mean, he own. <laughs> come, I, I although he what, did break the kid's bike, I know, know, but he bought him uh, a yeah, new yeah, one. Yeah. He bought him a new one. He can afford it. Uh, yeah. But I uh, just to one JJ <laughs> Watt story. So. Even though he didn't, pra he practiced just a little bit the first day, <laughs> yeah. uh, and kind of just tweaked the groin. He didn't practice the second day. He didn't play in the game. But uh, after practice that first day, Mark, you know, we walk up from the practice field up behind the stadium uh, on the uh, south side to get into the media yeah. entrance, and that's where the Texans were lockering. And JJ Watt got a golf cart ride up there, and the stream of kids looked like ants going after a picnic watermelon. Yeah. And all rushing, and J.J. sat there, and I sat there for a good five, ten minutes, and he signed every damn thing. Uh, just an unbelievable guy. Yeah. Just an unbelievable guy. Yeah, kind Great of a NFL similar player. story. You know, I don't know him well, but I've met him a couple times. Yeah. So before the game, I, I went up and you know uh, said hello. And um, well, he was he did a lap around the field. He was throwing balls up yep. to the stands. <laughs> yeah. He was playing and, catch with the fans. Yeah, he was yeah. playing catch with the fans. And uh, I was talking to Jamie Roots, their president. I said, geez, that's, that's great. He was doing it. He goes, he does it every game. So that's it wasn't a, just, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, if every team had a few guys like J.J. Watt, yeah. uh, what a better league this would be. There's no question. Well, and you that. think, uh, you know, I mean, what he did I think it was two or three years ago. The hurricane. The hurricane relief. After, oh, it was unbelievable. I think he said, I, I, I'd like to get $100,000. Yeah, know, and he ended up. That was his original goal. Yeah. 20 million or whatever yeah. it was. Just unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. What do you think the odds are of getting the draft here in Green Bay? Um, better than the Super Bowl. 
Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> going out on the limb there. I think we all knew that uh, yeah, one, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we we uh, we have applied to host in 2022, and then 20, probably uh, very unlikely in 2022, yeah. but 2024 and beyond. Um, you know, I think a key for us is going to be the new Expo Hall that's replacing the Brown County Arena, and then you know, in a couple years when Title Town is all built out, um, I think that gives us a better chance as well. And, you know, the league is viewing the draft as something that it can give to teams or cities that will never have a Super Bowl. So, um, you know, a lot of teams are, uh, you know, have applied, but, you know, I think our, and you look at it, obviously, when you see in Nashville, there were 600,000 people there. Um, if there were 600,000 people here, that would be, uh, I don't know where they would be. <laughs> but, um, so it would be a little different. Start but booking if, hotel rooms in Eau Claire. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you think about could it. sleep yeah, at Lambeau. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could have, I mean, uh, people, drive up from Chicago True. for the day, Minneapolis for the day. Um, so, I, you know, it, and I think, you know, for the focus on our history and tradition and Lambeau Field, um, I, I, think it's, I think it's possible. Uh, it may be a few years down the road, but uh, I do think it will eventually happen. 24. Yeah? Oh, That's why not? Right. I think yeah. everything will be up and running then, and, uh, and we'll see. I have a feeling you're right. I think this is going to be a really neat place. So they're going to do it in Philly, and I know that wasn't as well-received as Nashville, but I think this would certainly – uh, come close. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Mark Murphy, the Packers president and CEO. Opening night of the fifth quarter live from the turn. I love the name. You did too. We were talking you know about why? that. You know why? You're a golfer. You know. Yes, I know why. Because we're going to play the front nine today and the back nine tomorrow, and we're going to stop at the turn. That's we'll right. Meet me All right. At the turn. <laughs> yeah. Powered by Top Golf Swing Suites. We're back with more right after this. Here are Mark Daniels and Matt Z. All right, welcome back, everybody. Packers had their birthday yesterday, fifth quarter's 40th birthday tonight. Packer President Mark Murphy, our guest tonight. So how much grass seed did you give away yesterday, Murphy? We, uh, almost 5,000. Yeah, no, 5, we 5,000 packets of grass seed? That's how many we, yeah. That's I remember we had. Anybody remember the 49er playoff game, the Mud Bowl? Desmond Howard's punt return? It tore up the field so bad they sold boxes of muddy sod for 10 <laughs> bucks a box, and the line was just as long. Yeah, for that as it was the grass seed. I think I still got mine in the freezer somewhere. I really do. Yeah, <laughs> box of sod. So no, yeah, we had a great crowd. Uh, you know, the line. Yeah, the, you were there. We saw the line. It went almost about halfway around the stadium. That's but awesome. It moved. It moved pretty quickly though. And did you get any cupcakes? Yeah, those uh, cupcakes are good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we uh, showed uh, some preliminary clips of uh, oh, the documentary. Legacy, the documentary. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I, all our fans, you got, you're gonna love it when you it's see. It's gonna be the, good. The I'm sure. Thing. I'm sure yeah. it's gonna be good. Yeah. When that thing, when you got that one premiering? Uh, it's to be determined, but uh, probably um, between Thanksgiving and uh, okay. Christmas. All right. Perfect Christmas gift. Oh, oh, Salesman Mark oh, Murphy. Really? All right. You still need that much revenue? Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you offer gift wrapping yeah, here too? Really? Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> Free shipping. Yeah, yeah, free shipping. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Gabrielle Dow's going to do all the gift wrapping <laughs> upstairs. Um, it's the NFL's 100th this year. Yes. Uh, so they're uh, jumping in. Uh, I know your birthday, is really, because you weren't in the NFL until 1921. 21, yeah. So, no, it's uh, very confusing. I know. We actually started before the league. Uh, but, no, uh, and, you know, what a great way to start the season with Packers, Bears. There's Soldier no Field. other game. I don't yeah. care. Z's a Patriots fan. I think no. you know that, Murph. But yeah. there's, there's just no other game you can start the 100th NFL it season. It had to be this matchup. Yeah. With 198th or Well, you know, closing in on 200. Oh, yeah, and it's so close. You go back and forth. Um, yeah, normally the Super Bowl champion hosts that mm -hmm. first game, but... Number one, I think the league's kind of a little, everybody's a little tired of, they have Patriot fatigue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah but I've heard the, about that, sure. For the 100th season. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it'll be the 197. 197. Yeah, wow. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And then, but the Patriots will host the Sunday night game. So we'll play that yep. Thursday and they'll play Sunday night. But Oh, and the league, um, they're, they're going to do all kinds of things. It can be down in Grant Park, so on Wednesday, oh. day before, and then, um, you know, Thursday the day of the game. Well, I'm driving down the day of the yeah. game, and I'm staying downtown, so I don't know how the hell I'm going to drive through that. But <laughs> I'll find a way. Take the train. Take, that's I a good highly idea. suggest it if you uh, go to nope. Chicago. Yeah, that's Park, true. Milwaukee Airport. Yeah, yeah. take yeah. the train. In. Just hop good way to do it. There. Not yeah. bad. Good thought. Yeah. Yeah. Good thought. All right, Smart, we got to ask don't you this. Don't have to pay for parking here <laughs> yeah. in the city. Had this 
texted in earlier from a listener who knew you were going to be on the show. I had to ask this question. Uh-oh. said, ask Mark what he thinks about the third down foghorn at Lambeau. <laughs> the listener described it as sounding like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I hadn't heard that one. We, no. uh, <laughs> we need to get your impressions of Well, you know, we're trying the to horn. do, I think, you know, Matt talked a little bit about it yesterday. We're trying to do, <laughs> trying to do everything we can to give ourselves a home field advantage, mm-hmm. especially on third down. You want it to be as loud as possible. You know, we've tried Get Loud Lambo, asked the fans to stand up, and people have said, well, they're standing, I can't see. Well, then, <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the whole goal is to, to give ourselves a home field advantage. Uh, I have heard of, uh, from a lot of people about the, the horn. A lot of people said they thought it was the Vikings horn. The Gala yeah. horn. Yeah. It's yeah. a little it's too not, similar. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. The most annoying sound yeah. effect in NFL history. So it's, uh, I'll say it's a work in progress. We're, okay. we're, we're right. finding what, uh, what's the right thing. You know, so we're not yeah. married to the, uh, to the fart machine. Then. <laughs> yeah. And I'm married to that? Okay, good. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and we always hear that. Green Bay Packer fans are the most sophisticated. They should know to get loud on third down. Yeah. I don't think, you know, you have to egg them on. I remember back in the day, Bart Starr actually came to the media one day and he said, look, we want you, uh, they started this pack attack uh, vernacular uh, hmm. in all of their bumper stickers and merchandise, pack attack this, pack attack that. Bart came to us one day and he says, now when you write your story in the papers or go on the radio, I want you to not just say the Green Bay Packers, but I want you to say the pack attack. Packers did this, or the, and we went. Oh. And we were looking at Bart like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> and that one lasted about that long. So well, I would say this: we, if we play better on defense on third down, that will. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. What were the Texans that <laughs> night? Uh, oh like, no, I know. Uh, no, no, no. It was like pretty good. No, they had a good seven day. to twelve. But we had turnover. Bl- we had three turnovers. Blame it on the horn. Yeah, blame it on the horn. They could is it? Is it too many distractions with our smartphones and all that sort of a thing where maybe we're just not as engaged as we used to be moment to moment in sporting events? No, that's a good point, Matt. And, you know, and I obviously, and I think even more so in the preseason. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, and, and with, you know, with sports betting now and gambling. I was going to say, um, so when's the casino opening up in the district, <laughs> Mark? Well, it's all tied into, um, you know, the state's relationship with the uh, tribal nation compact now and uh, but I you know you look across the league and across the country uh, it's moving pretty rapidly mm-hmm. Illinois now has allows uh, sports betting Iowa is about to so every almost I every just state saw around some us. team was doing an interactive betting the, the Redskins, in the Redskins, the Redskins, Redskins yeah. Redskins and I believe the Rams are the other and so it's it's not betting it's um, just basically a, they call it a free-to-play game and uh, you can win prizes so it's not it's not betting it's more of a contest, and it's one slippery slope there. Mark. But it's well, another reason to <laughs> yeah. not. Well, yeah, I mean, you try, you're trying to keep the fans engaged, and uh, you know, it is a high tech generation of fans yeah. you are welcoming into this. But world. you're not being engaged with what's on the field so much. It's with everything else that's around you. I mean, it's I guess it's more of an experience yeah. that you're trying to create then for the fan to what, get them to come. What to have you. fantasy football rot? That's I believe yeah. the real oh, trigger absolutely. in all yeah. of this. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I'm not familiar with all the details of this free-to-play. But, sure. You know, it can be, um, you know, I think that there will be a safety in the third quarter. You can predict different things, and then if, if it ends up happening, then you, you win a prize. But it, it's a way to keep fans engaged and watching the game. The game was always good enough for me. I mean, oh, I, Yeah, I agree. But, uh, you know, it's just these damn millennials, Mark. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, but I, it, I raised two of them. Or, yeah. It's yeah. so easy to stay at home and feel like you're getting an in-game experience. You need to at draw them I can to see. your place. But again, at home, well, I can you know, see. Matt, you make a good point. The, the experience, the TV experience, yeah. is so good that you know you have need. to figure out a way to bring them to you. Yeah, yeah. And that's so. You know, why did you first drop the NFL Network? That's what I want to know. All right, I'll let it fix you. Yeah, that is a bad, bad thing <laughs> for me. All right, we got to take one more break. Murphy got one more segment in you. We're going to come back and head to the finish line of opening night of the fifth quarter with Mark Murphy right after this. All right, welcome back, everybody. Mark Murphy, the Packer president, our guest. We are outside the turn. It is powered by Top Golf Swing Suites, and it's going to be a fabulous home all season long. And uh, Z, you got some info on how. So folks can get even more involved with the turn. Yeah, go to the turngreenbay.com. Simple to remember, the turngreenbay.com. There you can sign up to stay in touch for special offers, prize drawings, so much more. You can join their mailing list. 
I'm super excited they're going to have 48 beers on tap here. I, at least. I, I, I lost count of the tap that they're still screwing in yeah. right now. But, uh, it's very line, exciting The lines for me. will be hooked up fairly soon. And great uh, food. The food menu looks awesome yeah. as well. The things that have been trickling out for that, yeah. Yeah, a couple really of weeks cool. away. You hi- I saw you hired a new chef. Oh, yeah. Head no, chef. it's, it's going to be really nice. It looks like uh, you know right before the Chiefs preseason game will be the opening. Okay, opening. good. Awesome. That yeah. should be great. Yeah, go to theturngreenbay.com, join their mailing list, and keep up to date with everything the turn is doing. All right, Mark, expectations for year 101. You got any? Are you just going to watch this thing unfold here with Matt Super Bowl. Beauty now? Well, you know, the expectations here, I mean, I know they never are, change. Yeah. yeah. No, they're, well, I'm, I'd be very disappointed if we didn't make the playoffs. You know, two years in a row, uh, been outside the, the playoffs, and, uh, you know, when, when you have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, we should be in the playoffs every year. All right. No more calves, no more shoulders, no more... Uh, any of that? We want to bubble wrap our players. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I, you know, you sound like Ted Thompson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, really? it, I know. <laughs> I know. It, it's funny. Uh, Put you know, him in the sumo outfit. Yeah, when I was a wild. player, when I was a player, I never even thought about or worried about injuries. And now in my position, I'm like, oh my gosh! Uh, did you ever suffer seriously? I don't think you I did. I didn't miss a yeah, practice so. until my seventh year in the league. Wow. wow. I was, it was pretty. I couldn't if I because if I'd missed brackets, I would have probably been cut. I think the first time, the first time I saw you was you were chasing Kaufman, I think, down the middle over here, 48, 47. <laughs> well, as we say, that was so, not a good, good wasn't a good night to be named a defensive back. Mark, Mark <laughs> so, back in your playing days, after a practice, after a game, what was sort of the treatment like for you guys, post games? Um, just an ice tank, and that was kind of it. We, or? we, we had the the ice tub, and then the, the day after that, um, you know, usually a whirlpool. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's we've come so far now. With, oh, you've got the suits. Although, you know, I guess it didn't work out so well yeah. for Antonio. Antonio Brown. Brown. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. Frostbite yeah. on his feet. <laughs> Riot therapy yeah. tank in oh. in France. <laughs> so. Yeah. I don't know if people, but uh, I'm sure they don't. Yeah, yeah. you watch Hard Knocks; it'll be interesting if they get into that story. Good lord! But yeah, he—he, you're supposed to wear socks when you're in it, and he did not, and he ended up with frostbite. You have to make make sure you are completely dry, otherwise, it's yes, you you develop frostbite. Your skin freezes. Thanks, Kevin. Hard Knocks didn't come here with a first-year head coach. Oh well, they can't. If you have a first-year head coach, oh, you can't get out of it. And then Can the you other, ever see the Packers doing hard knocks? I hope not. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so. I think we would certainly be interesting. You know, it's uh, kind of a different structure and, and the, with a fan, fan involvement and a shareholder. Uh, but if you are in, if you in the playoffs, uh, they also can't require mm-hmm. you to be on. So right. uh, that's our goal is to make the playoffs <laughs> right. every let's year. Let's avoid hard let's knocks. Let's well, and, it's, and, it's, and it's, you know, they're adding. So um, they also have a show called All or Nothing. And that's uh, year long that uh, another team is doing that. So you're seeing the league kind of move in that direction, right. letting the fans a little closer to the action. But um, coaches and personnel people and executives don't like it necessarily. Yeah, Marketing little, people like yeah, it. Yeah, so a little it's, leery. I there's a little understand. bit of a tension there. All right. Uh, you're front loaded home here at Lambeau. Uh, and uh, that Viking game is going to be one special weekend. Uh, yeah. Remembering Bart. Oh, it's it's going to be great. It's uh, you know it's what we call our kickoff kickoff weekend. So, uh, but especially to be able to recognize and celebrate uh, Bart's life, and uh, we've got a number of different things, including the Green and Gold Gala on Friday night will be a tribute to Bart. Then we're going to have on Saturday down at Rawhide, you know, which uh, the Boys Ranch that Bart and Sherry established. Yeah, New London. Uh, yeah. We'll have a big public event there. And then, uh, you know, then uh, obviously at halftime. So our, it's our alumni weekend, and there'll be 60 alumni coming back, uh, all of whom either played with or Bart or, or played uh, were coached by him. Yeah, well, I don't know a lot of those. I don't know a lot of both of them, actually. Yeah. I got to know a lot yeah. of the Lombardi greats, obviously. Well, 40 years. Well, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember when I, I went on the Lombardi tour bus for and By the way, uh, Matt, you were a fan of his yeah. when you were one. That's, That's right. I'm very yeah, impressed. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> This show, box. this show runs deep in my soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that should be awesome. But yeah. challenging on the road late. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a, a really interesting test this year. Yeah, it, it's a very it's a very unique schedule. Um, you know, I, I think it obviously it's going to help us if we can get off to a good start. That would be nice. We, you know, with the home games, we need to get back to um, winning at home and having a real home field advantage. Last couple of years, we kind of got away from that, and um, I think that that would really bode well and. 
Uh, I, I'm excited. I think the, you know, open the season at Chicago. Uh, it's going to be a great, a great test for us, and uh, yeah, should uh, we win that one, it really helps us get off to a great start. I want to ask you quick before we let you go. I have a couple of minutes left. Sure. You were a DB. What do you think about the expanded replay for pass interference? Uh, I'm glad they didn't have it when I was playing. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I uh, obviously I'm on. I'm, well, I don't know if people know. I'm on a committee that uh, approved that. Hmm. It's a one-year experiment. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, when you look at, and the statistic that really stood out for me is when you look at the impact that wrong calls can have on games, uh, the one that really stands or out. Or non-calls. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, calls are not yeah. incorrect yeah. Uh, calls. Um, you know, the, yeah, the, the pass interference, I mean, that could be a 60-yard penalty. Sure. And that has a huge impact on the game, so you want to get it right. And um, so we're going to do it. Uh, it's... Uh, and what's interesting, Matt challenged it, and I, I, I think it was smart. I think he wants to kind of see how the officials are going to call it on in replay. But it's going to be a pretty high standard. I think it's got to be clear and obvious, and the receiver or the defensive back has to be substantial. Any talk of just going 15 against the defense on a, P, on a defensive PI? Uh, like the college? Yeah. We've talked about that. The concern there is that our athletes are so good that, um, that you'll see a lot of that. Yeah. So when we want to penalize, mm -hmm. rather penalize, than, that, rather than give up 45, just I'll we'll just take the 15 yeah. and throw you sure. down. Yeah, uh, yeah huh? that's a good no. point. That's no. a good point. It's going to be fun, uh, nonetheless. And Mark, again, I can't tell you how thrilled we were to have you here on opening night. How much fun it's going to be here all season long. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, be a, oh, it's a my resident. It's great. A I mean, weekly resident of title for your fans. I'm glad the weather's good. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this is great. There's a storm cloud over there, so we're going to wrap things up. But Mark, again, congratulations uh, yeah, uh, you, on a job well done, and, and best thank of you, luck Matt. here it's in 2019. Pleasure. All right, folks, every week we get to draw door prizes. Uh, here's the box. I'm glad you signed up. And uh, the one thing we're going to give away on the air every you week. You can't afford a square box? What's that? <laughs> you got the logo in there and everything. The box has never changed in 40 our friends, years. Our friends, from, our friends from Robinson's Heating and Cooling, when the pack's away, as they will be this week, you're going to go play over at the Packer Pro Shop just a block away. And a nice little gift card in for Howard Schrader. Howard, you Howard. are opening night winner. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. All right, we'll see you next Monday night, everyone. So long. <laughs>